Well, this is going to be a quick uh, demonstration of um, using remotely sensed data, overlaying that with uh, protected areas, and um, doing a quick course analysis of uh, land use change in protected areas with the idea of um, exploring whether protected areas are doing a good job of um, uh, maintaining the, the um, forest cover in general and, and um, the origin, not original, but maintaining a, a constant uh, land cover uh, uh, type in, uh, in protected areas. I put just my name and Fikirte's name, but there will be Kumara and Town uh, joining in at uh, some point, some points in this uh, presentation, so uh, it's actually a group effort. Okay, so what um, we did, sorry, I forgot to hook up my computer. Okay, so uh, what we did, we, we wanted to do here uh, was to, like I said, analyze land cover changes in protected areas in Ethiopia. And then, since we are going to go in the field um, tomorrow and the day after, or the Tuesday, uh, we uh, wanted to uh, couple this uh, in-class exercise or our, uh, our quick analysis with field observations, so uh, exploring whether the, um, our analysis, the uh, accuracy of land cover and land cover change um, is um, uh, good enough um, in terms of land cover classification. Okay. So the data we used um, uh, is freely available. Uh, the satellite data we use is freely available. It's uh, a MODIS product. Uh, this is one of the uh, commonly used uh, satellite data. Um, the the, program, the uh, um, MODIS um, satellite uh, team, let's say, uh, produces a bunch of uh, different um, uh, products. So we use this um, uh, land cover product that you can uh, um, download here. I'm going to try to do a quick, show you this uh, website very quickly. I don't know if I'm still, I'm still connected. Uh, I, I'd like to show you the table because uh, you will see there are a lot of products uh, derived from uh, uh, MODIS, MODIS satellite data. So this is the one that we used, uh, uh, yearly land cover data. Uh, available uh, from 2002 yearly until 2012. But besides that, if I can get to the MODIS table, you'll see that there are many more products uh, that are derived from, uh, from uh, MODIS satellite data. Yes. Um, there are several satellite platforms. This is the most modern. Um, the, the, the satellite vehicle, there's a difference between the satellite vehicle and the satellite sensor. MODIS is the sensor, moderate resolution imaging and spectrom spectrometer. Um, which, which, sorry, and then you continue all with this, but there's one that is based on terrestrial and there's one that is based on aquatic. So there's modest terra and there's modest aqua. Okay. Okay, so and yeah that's a good point. Uh, over here you'll see um, combined and that means that the product used both uh, sensors terra and aqua. But this is a long table it has, for example, uh, vegetation indices, uh, gross primary productivity, fraction of photosynthetic um, active FPAR active radiation. So uh, a, a variety of products if you are interested in vegetation um, characteristics, uh, MODIS products are, uh, I think, pretty, pretty useful. Okay, so that was that. Now if I can go back here. Okay, so we downloaded, we um, downloaded the land cover product, the yearly product, and we downloaded the land cover for 2002 and 2012. So basically 10 years, let's see uh, if we uh, identify uh, any land cover changes. And of course, land cover changes do occur in, in 10 years, but maybe forest uh, loss or anything uh, maybe more important uh, for us. So between 2002 and 2012. 
uh, the, the data, uh, the uh, modis, this uh, land cover product, uh, the resolution is 500 uh, meters, uh, the spatial resolution. And then we did have to uh, pre-process um, or uh, after downloading the data, we had to do uh, a little bit of uh, processing of data before we could actually use it in GIS. Uh, but this uh, processing step is easily done with um, a reprojection tool, a MODIS, uh, it's called MODIS, rep MODIS reprojection tool, and it's, uh, it was developed by uh, NASA, it's freely available, and I uh, put the link here for that tool. What this tool does is, it, uh, remember we talked about map projections, hit that information uh, uh, is uh, useful. Uh, when you download uh, these data, they come in a projection called sinusoidal that is not um, very useful for, for what we are doing. It's a very, um, um, I guess for biologists, a very strange looking uh, projection. With MODIS reprojection tool, what you can do is change the projection, reproject data, uh, these uh, rasters to geographic projection or uh, an equal area projection like Albert's equal area, and you also, in the, same, in the same tool, what you do is you um, stitch together, uh, you merge together images because you'll see, um, uh, for example, for Ethiopia, there are, I think, I think, three or four tiles that cover Ethiopia. So the satellite imagery uh, is produced in um, uh, these um, tiles, I don't know a different word for tile, but in these uh, segments, and then we have to uh, put the segments together to make uh, uh, a continuous map, map for, for our study area. So with this modi MODIS reprojection tool, you hit two uh, points, uh, reprojecting, getting rid of that uh, weird projection, uh, getting into a geographic projection, and also stitching together or mosaicing together uh, uh, pieces of, the, uh, what, of what makes the image for, uh, for Ethiopia. Okay, so here are the two uh, land cover products for 2002 and 2012. Uh, for, for the uh, land cover classes, you see numbers, uh, but there is a legend that you download with, with the data, and uh, if you are interested, the first, this zero is water, and then the first four uh, represent different forest types, uh, broadleaf, uh, evergreen uh, versus deciduous. Uh, forests, so one, two, three, four, five, six represent uh, shrub, grass, and then seven, eight, two different types of crop, uh, nine represents urban uh, buildup, uh, or so non, non vegetative uh, cover, um, and I think 10 and 11 represent, 10 is snow, and 11 is uh, barren uh, land, or vice versa, the last two. Anyways, and 255 is no data, so Outside of the, uh, the tiles that I downloaded, outside of Ethiopia, I have no data because that's where uh, the tiles uh, stop. Okay. And then we couple the, these uh, two um, images, two rasters of land cover from 2002 and 12. We uh, couple them with uh, a shape file. Remember rasters and shape files? We talked about that yesterday. Uh, with a shapefile representing the protected areas in, in Ethiopia. And here's where it got complicated because I started, when, when I started to uh, get ready for this workshop, uh, for this course, I downloaded uh, the, um, shape, the uh, protected areas from this uh, United Nations Environmental Program World Database of Protected Areas. Uh, and here's the link. I downloaded data from there, and then some uh, some time later, I, I sat down with Fikirte, and she told me this is not correct. Uh, Gambela uh, Gambela uh, shape is Gambela National Park doesn't have this shape. Uh, there are some protected areas that are not really uh, um, protected areas anymore. So, but we decided we're going to keep this one, and we are also going to use. Uh, locally, not locally, but nationally curated uh, data set uh, for uh, the national parks. So this is where Fikirte uh, contacted uh, colleagues here uh, in Ethiopia, and she can tell you more if you're interested where uh, this, uh, these shapefiles came, came from. So we have national parks, 
plus the wildlife uh, reserve that we are going to visit. So we limited uh, the second set of analysis to national parks plus uh, St. Keller, which we are going to visit tomorrow. Okay. So what's the reason for the big difference between those or some of the other ones? I forest reserves? don't know. I don't know. You mean the difference between W? Uh, yes. Um, we don't know. They are not updated, I guess. I, I mean, Ethiopian uh, skin. Uh, the first one, maybe there are a number of uh, protected areas which established, but not yet uh, registered by a user and other, so the data is not incorporated. Even this uh, map shows the, most of the protected area which is managed under federal government, but there are a number of protected areas which is managed with respect to regional government. Mm -hmm. So we have a data limit, and th that's the case most of the time. And some protected areas are reduced in size. Yeah. And Fikirte asked me yesterday, and I, I couldn't answer this question, asked me, uh, can anybody just contact the uh, World uh, Database Protected a World, I forgot, uh, w, World Database of Protected Areas, and just provide an updated shape file? I have no idea if that's possible. I think that's done via national points of contact. Uh -huh. So that would be the Ethiopian wildlife. Maybe Kumara can say something here because he's responsible for that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go. Do, do you want to say something or you want to talk? No, uh, yeah, the previous one. Uh, yeah, this one has uh, a lot of change because uh, maybe they haven't updated uh, mm -hmm. the recent uh, location of uh, our protected areas. There are so many chains afterwards. Yeah. But the last one which you showed us more rea realistic. Yes. So is this something you can do uh, to uh, update this, to send the updated information? Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, you know, supported by a volunteer from USA, which I told you earlier. Mm -hmm came as a peace corpus. He's the one who just updated the shape files of uh, uh, our protected area. Okay. Some five five years ago? No, three years ago. Three years ago, four years ago. So th the last, your last uh, map is uh, the recent one and the more realistic. Because there are a lot of land exchange happened to this, the, the original one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I think this, this map includes Forest priority, uh, forest priority areas. We have 58 forest priority areas, and some of the map are, for example, this one is the Bergeda Forest, which I am working my PhD. Mm -hmm. So there are other 57 such type of forest priority areas which are included in this map. So this is uh, not only uh, protected areas in the sense of wildlife, but also other forest priority areas mm -hmm. which are not uh, delineated or just uh, their uh, name is only inc included in forest priority areas but little was done on these uh, areas okay yeah so it's it's a very um, it needs a uh, updating <laughs> for sure okay I'm gonna squeeze by Okay, so this is the second uh, uh, GIS file, the second uh, shape file of, or vector that we used. Um, and then in terms of analysis, what we did, uh, first we merged the, the uh, I said there were four forest classes. We merged the four into a single forest class because we were more uh, interested in whether any forest class has changed into something else or any other uh, land cover type has uh, transition to forest, any type of forest. So we merged the, the four uh, forest classes into one, and then we also merged the, the two crop types into one. And then the next thing we did was using the shape file with protected areas, the two different uh, versions we had, we extracted, um, we basically cut, cookie cut the um, um, raster. So we retained only land cover, um, the raster, the land cover raster was uh, reduced to just those regions that are uh, uh, in the protected areas uh, file. And then we also calculated 
the area that is um, represented by each class in each protected area. So this is tabulating uh, area in each class uh, in each protected area polygon. So just to see for uh, each um, a protected area polygon or prote uh, protected area um, uh, outline or what uh, type of uh, land cover we have uh, specifically amount area of uh, different land cover types okay so what we see here if we use that shape file that is not updated uh, that has more uh, polygons and more areas that are actually protected currently in uh, in Ethiopia um, so what we see here are a uh, number of pixels uh, that have not changed. So uh, pixels that have not changed that are, were grass 10 years ago, still grass uh, now, or 2012, sorry, shrub, forest, uh, crops, then barren uh, land and water. So these are, uh, again, areas measured in a uh, number of pixels areas that have not changed in 10 years. Then if we look at um, areas that did change, uh, what we see is uh, a number of pixels uh, changing from grass to shrub. So we could potentially think this is some form of succession uh, going from grass to shrub, uh, maybe possibly less grazing. Uh, I don't know, you, you know better uh, these areas, so I won't comment anymore. Um, so grass to shrub, we also have grass to forest, grass to crop, and then the, the forest, the change from forest to something else, to another class, that, that type of change is not very uh, prevalent. So in other words, it looks like forest, uh, forest uh, cover has not transitioned in great de uh, degrees to uh, other, forest, other land cover types. Yes, Don? Two quick comments. One is, that those forest related bars really have to be scaled to how much forest there is. And a lot of Ethiopia doesn't have forest. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the other thing is, everybody remember, these classifications are not without error. And so some of these shifts might be misclassifications or unstable classifications. So for example, grass to crop, that can be a really difficult thing to distinguish, especially with a, with a grass crop like teff, okay? So I, I just make the comment that you kind of have to think a little bit about what really matters to me here. You know, for example, forest to crop, the signature of that in the imagery has to be pretty dramatic. Mm -hmm, definitely, yes. Uh, and if we were to scale that to the amount of forest there was in the first image, I think we might get a very different bar. Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing is that, the misclassification, the other is uh, the, the error, okay? Yeah, and remember these are 500 by 500 meter pixels, so we are dealing with uh, we are dealing with resolution that is not necessarily that uh, that great, especially if, and this is you know the uh, s um, land cover data uh, cut to just protected areas. And if you have small protected areas, you have a few pixels, 500 meters by 500 meters. So there are some issues. I think Bilal wanted to say something. Just, just really, 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 really quickly. Um, uh, the more this classification, its accuracy varies upon uh, where you are. So it's really good for some tropical areas. It might not, not be good for, it might be good for forest in tropical areas, but not so good for uh, grassland ecosystems. Um, as a result of this, the folks over at NASA have decided that um, they want to do away with some of the, the categorical data and instead use continuous data. And it's a, it's a land cover classification that they call vegetation continuous fields. And so that's just a gradient from like zero to 100 that tells you the relative density of vegetative cover. Yes, okay. Yeah, and I didn't mention that um, uh, the MODIS land cover uh, product has, I think, five, I can remember, uh, 
precisely at least five different land cover uh, classification schemes. And we picked the one that had the least uh, classes because with more classes, uh, you, in, you tend to have uh, even uh, more classification errors. So we picked the one that had the, the least uh, diversity of, of uh, classes. Okay. And then uh, just, um, so this was looking at the uh, numbers or graphing numbers, uh, but, but this is a spatial view of um, changes. So what I did is I um, coded in gray pixels that had not changed between 2002 and 2012. So anywhere you see gray, like for example here, uh, here and there, and somewhere in here, um, that means the land cover, think about uh, classification errors, all that, but so with those caveats in mind, the land cover uh, has not changed uh, where you see gray. And then I, cha I made um, a gradient from uh, dark red to blue, uh, various types of, uh, of changes or switching between uh, one uh, land cover type uh, and another. And there are so many combinations that we are not going to go through, but I just wanted you to have a visual uh, with the only, I guess, main point that I can make is that where you see uh, large areas of gray, it may, it may indicate um, least uh, land cover change in the 10 years. And then we are, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to stop and let, pe oh, I know, uh, we are going to stop soon. <laughs> uh, let somebody else uh, chime in. So at the national park level, same thing. Here are uh, here is the area in number of pixels that has not seen uh, changes, uh, and you see for uh, for the uh, national parks here, just just the national parks, not all protected areas. Uh, we have uh, small numbers of pixels in forest because it's not a, a very uh, broad land cover type, and then shrub no change and grass no change. These are the dominant ones, and then for change. Um, again, area uh, uh, quantified as numbers, number of pixels, um, we see change from shrub to grass, again, grass to shrub, uh, some crops to grass, which could be, could be uh, related also to uh, classification error, and then forest to shrub and forest to grass, we have some, uh, uh, some amount of change from forest to shrub or, uh, or grass. Okay. And then the same thing, a visual um, of, of the um, national parks and protect, uh, sorry, national parks and land cover change. Uh, 